Shalom, giving all praise to the Most High, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakak Radash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the elect of Israel. All right, to all the brothers who are out there pushing this truth, pushing this gospel throughout the four winds of the earth, and all you sisters out there who believe in the gospel of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. I say to you all, Shalawan, it's your brother Atazawan by Alcum, bring a, a lesson. Uh, and really, um, as I got this uh, lesson here from last night on the screen, I think I mentioned that I was going to try to go into uh, another lesson dealing with patience. And through the spirit, I mean, uh, it just so happens that, um, you know, uh, the idea of doing it uh, tonight, you know, uh, came upon me because there was a comment made by a brother who frequents the page. He's not a scoffer, you know, um, and I told him I would, I would do a lesson because he made a comment. And um, he had a couple of statements within the comment that I'm, I'm going to address, Lord willing, it will be edifying uh, to anybody that watches the video because... We always say that though the regular brothers and sisters may tune in, there's, there's always a chance that somebody new is watching, right? So we want to make sure uh, that we do the lesson so that they can understand it, you know, being new, okay? So I'm going to try to get down here to the comment uh, on the page. And like I said, uh, this brother here made a comment. And... Um, you know, he's a good brother, you know, um, but there's a couple of things in here I'm just going to flesh out because, you know, it actually, it, it goes into the patience that we must, we must have, okay? Um, and this comment reads, the endurance can be overwhelming. Yahweh shot sweated blood in his last hours. He was under intense physical pressure, which may have caused capillaries to rupture. Okay, so when we read that in John uh you know, we, we can kind of see the human side of how it's shy. You know, the anxiety is really what will cause, you know, uh, something of that nature. You know, the intense anxi anxiety of knowing that, hey, he's got to go to the cross, man. You know, it's a heavy weight to bear, right? So going on in this comment, he said, I'm saying this. Uh, all I'm saying is one can only take but so much. And yeah, that's that's true in the in the in the flesh that we're in to a certain degree. All right. The end couldn't come fast enough. Right. And that's true. We all looking for the end. We want it to be today, if at all possible. Right. But that's not in our hands. OK. Um, and he goes on to say, dragging along at this point in Babylon, most of us know what's what. Let's let's get it. Let's get the show on the road and get it over with. Pretty much is what he's saying. Um, and uh, he goes on to say that, uh, you know, this place should have been done 10 years ago. We've been uh, enduring since the time Yahweh Shai left 2,000 years ago, generally speaking. You know, he goes on and says, sounds like, you know, you guys want this place to, to go on forever. This place is through by 2023. Well, you know, therein lies, you know, a little bit of a complication here because none of us actually know when the time is that the Lord shall return, right? We all want to get out of here. There's, 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 no, there's no question about that. But what? This is where that patience that we, we speak about, that we read about, you know, comes into play. So uh, I'll read a little bit about what I, you know, responded to the brother. You know, and I said, I'm not sure what you mean when you say you guys, uh, you guys begin to sound like you want this place to go on forever. Um, I've never I've never heard anyone say that, and least of all myself. Babylon, the, the great, will be destroyed. Revelation 18 and 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Verse 2, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great, is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, the hole of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean, hateful bird. Okay? 
Uh, and, you know, you can go and read the comment for yourself. So I'm just going to get into the lesson, the lesson about patience, right? So let's look at it a little bit. And we go into our words, you know, for those out there who don't know, you know, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone taught us to go into the words, right? And us brothers who were coming up behind the elder brothers, the big brothers, you know, we do the same. We try to do the same, okay? So let's look at uh, this word patience and see if it comes up, okay? This is Miriam Webster, okay? So let's just look at it, okay? Let's listen to it. Let's see if it'll play. Come on. Sometimes when you have these windows open for a long period of time, <clears throat> it's a lot. Patience. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Patience. Okay. And it says uh, the ability to wait for a long Patience. time. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> the ability to wait for a long time without becoming annoyed or upset. OK, and sometimes, yeah, you know, it's hard to be patient for a long, long time, even though you how a child left here 2000 years ago. Right. What the saints still have to wait. We still have to wait for his return. Second definition, it says the ability to remain calm and not become annoyed when dealing with problems or with difficult people. I think there was something else I wanted to go to down here in the. Uh, Synonyms, let me see here. Salakia. Um, yeah, right here it says forbearance, long suffering, sufferance, tolerance. Okay, and that's what we have to do. We have to tolerate our life here in Babylon the Great. Okay, we have to wait on the Lord. We can't do anything about it. Right? So let's go to quickly what is the opposite? The opposite is impatience. Okay. Impatience. 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 The tendency to be impatient, irritability, or restlessness. And it has synonyms of restlessness, uh, restiveness, frustration, agitation, nervousness. Okay. So we can't get impatient. Right. We have to be patient. OK, we go through that suffering. Here's impatience again uh, with Google. I think it says the patience. same thing, the same definition, the tendency to be impatient. OK, irritably or restlessness. OK, irritability or restlessness. You see, so let's look at a couple examples here. Let's go through a few scriptures. All right. And this is fine because we, you know, you make a lesson out of it. Right. And then Lord willing, somebody learn something. OK, so this is Acts one. So I can act, act, uh, act chapter one, verse one. So like the former tra uh, treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Yahweh began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. Right. Taken up through the, with the chariot or by the chariot. After that, he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining, pertaining to the kingdom of the Most High, right? And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jer Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he ye have heard of me. Right? It goes on in verse 5 and it says, And John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Right? So here's your house child getting ready to be taken away. And the men want to know, are they going to be back in power now? You see? So we always, we always want to know that. When, when, does, when does this end? 
when when do these people, when do these Edomites and these dirty red Romans get out of our face now? Are, are we back in power now? You see? And he goes on and he says, And he, Yahweh said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. You see? So he told them even then. And yeah, it's 2,000 years or so later. You see? Verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Right. So the preaching goes on until we get set until the kingdom of the Most High is set up here on earth and how shall I returns. We know the whole story, right? But we have to be patient. Even though they were, they, they were hoping that it would happen in their day and it didn't. You see? Go over to uh, Matthew here, Matthew 24 and 36. Okay, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of no were, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. Yeah. So we don't know. We can't say in 2021, 2023. Why two years from now? We don't want to be here two more hours. You know. So I'll read it again, uh, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. That's going on today, same thing. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Right. He catch you by surprise. Or it's going to happen when it's supposed to happen, but you're not going to get... So he... Let me back up and just say at the top of this, it's, it's going into the, I believe, the parable of the fig tree, right? So he, he's given us signs that he's close, okay? That he's close. And that's, that's our hope. That's, that's our patience, you see? Um, verse 40, then shall two be in the field and one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding in the mill, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Okay. Verse 42. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Okay. We can't put no specific time on it. We don't know. But we have to be prepared. We have to be ready. Okay, even though we're going through all this suffering, even though we, we hate Babylon the Great, we're vexed in our spirit, vexed in our soul, that we want this place to be done and over with. Right? But we got to, we have to wait. All right? Verse 43, but know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what, in what uh, watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready. See, that's our job. We got to be ready. That's our part. For in such an hour as ye think not what the son of man cometh. Okay, so our job is to be ready. Lord willing, it makes sense. Okay, let's look at uh, Zephaniah 3. And like I say, it's not to that brother. I ain't, you know, I understand being vexed in the spirit. You know, we want to get out of here, you know, but we, we're not, we're not advocating staying. Okay. And to anyone else, you know, anyone else that's out there, you know, or, or a new person, you know, this is what we're waiting on. Okay. Uh, let's jump right in here. It says, woe to Jerusalem and the nations is starting right there. Uh, Three and verse one, woe to her that is filthy and polluted to the oppressed city. She obeyeth not the voice. She receiveth not correction. She trusteth not in the Lord. How about Shem Yahushai? She drew not near to her power. Her princes within her 
or roaring lions or judges or even wolf, uh, evening wolves. They gnaw not the bones till, till the marrow or marrow, Salakia. Her prophets are light and treacherous persons. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. The just Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning doeth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. I have cut off the nations, the towers are desolate. I made the streets waste that none passeth by. Their cities are destroyed so that there is no man, that there is none inhabitant. I said, surely thou wilt, Salaki, fear me, thou wilt receive instruction so their dwelling should not be cut off. Howsoever I punished them, but they rose early and corrupted all their doings. Listen. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord. Get about all the other action that's going on. Okay? Keep your mind focused. Keep your eye single. Therefore wait Ye upon me, saith the Lord, Yahweh by Shem Shai, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then will I turn to the people, people a pure language that they may call upon the name of the Lord, Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, to serve him with one consent. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, by uh, suppliants, even the daughters of my dispersed shall bring mine offering. In that day shall thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me, for then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride and thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. We keep reading. What does it say? A remnant of Israel. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people and they shall trust in the name of the Lord Yahweh Shem Shai. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. The Lord is doing all this. We can't do it. Okay? Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice in all thy heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord, Yahweh, has taken away thy judgment. He has cast out thine enemy, the king of Israel, even the Lord, Yahweh, is in the midst of thee, Thou shalt not see evil anymore. The Lord's going to take care of everything for us. We got to be patient. Okay. Um, verse 16. In that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear thou not. And to Zion, let not thy hand be slack. The Lord, Yahweh, thy power in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful from the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all the afflict, all that afflict thee and I will save her that halteth and gather her that was driven out and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they were where they have been put to shame see it hasn't happened yet and at that time I will bring you again even in that time I will gather you for I will make you a name and a praise among all people on the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes saith the Lord Yahweh Yahweh Shai that's what we waiting on see We can't be impatient. We, we have to endure the long suffering. Okay? 
This is Peter. Second Peter three and three and right there at the top, it says the coming day of the Lord, right? The Lord is going to get his justice, if you will. Okay. We can't force his hand. We playing our part. We just, we just got to be patient. Okay. Um, Starting right there at uh, verse three, it says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? See, and we can't let life get the best of us. We can't let it frustrate us to the point where, you know, you say, ah, I'm tired of this. How much longer do we have to go? Why are we why do we have to wait so long? Nah, we can't do that. Okay. Verse four and saying, where's the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of the most high, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that that then was being overflowed with water perished. Right. As in the days of Noah. See? It's, it's all, it's, it's reiterated. Okay? Verse 7, But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. We just read that. Right? Verse 8. Salakia, let me slide down a little bit here. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. He knows that he made a promise. He's going to take care of it. As some men count slackness. Yeah, you got a bunch of grumbly niggas that are doing the same thing as they were when Paul was alive. Murmuring, complaining from the days of Moses. Right? But is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Right, those nuclear missiles. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up, seeing that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Here we are, looking for and hastening. What's this year? What's the, what's, what's, what's the title for the year? Hastening the coming of the Lord, right? As coined by, by um, our apostles, right? Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, uh, wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, um, Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him that him hath written unto you. Let me read that again. And, a, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also with other scriptures unto their own destruction. Right. So, you know, we understand these scriptures. We're getting the wisdom out of it, you know, through the Holy Spirit. 
and there's a whole bunch of hey, you got two thirds who, who could pick up a Bible or, and, and look at it and say, I don't understand this. And they put it down. Right. Uh, verse 17, ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also being laid, being, so like being led away with the error of the wicked, fail from your own steadfastness. Uh, so like you fall from your own steadfastness. Right. You know, you don't you don't want that to happen to you. OK. Be diligent. Last verse, verse 18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Okay. So, I'm sorry it took so long to get to the point, you know, all the scriptures, but, you know, I want this to, to you know, hit home that, you know, we, we have to wait on the Lord. Okay. And our job is to be prepared and, and to be ready to go. Okay. And uh, not let this life frustrate us to that point that we lose sight of that. Okay. This is our uh, first Thessalonians five. Okay. The day of the Lord again. Okay. The apostle Paul. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you for yourselves. Know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, and they saying that crap now, right? And it's you know you you're gonna have to we're gonna have hey you got to deal with that. You we we're looking right at them. Like I said, the Lord giving us the signs that we we are close. Okay, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. Right when a woman gets ready, her water breaks. Bam, just out of nowhere. Right. Um. As to prevail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Right. You're aware of the situations that are going on in this lifetime. You see it. You know, you're closer more now than they were 100 years ago, 50 years ago. Okay. Here, all the children of light and the children of day, we are not in the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Okay? Right. Having no other doctrine in us, we don't, you know, we hold it fast to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Okay? Verse 7, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night, but let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. See? That's our hope. All right. And we'll get to another scripture on hope. Uh, Lord willing, this thing don't cut off on me. Uh, verse nine, for the most high has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, who died for us, that whether we be wake, wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. You understand? So this is about, you know, teaching and helping so that you can understand. Yes, Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed. It's destroyed in the spirit realm. We have to let the cards come out, you know, as you, you know, uh, like the Lord wants it to. You know, we can't force the Lord's hand. That's not our job. He's, he's in control of that. OK, we can't pick a year and say it's going to happen this and that. No, we can't do that either. OK. And here uh, I had pulled up those same scriptures that I gave that young brother. OK. Revelation 18 and one. And I think I, I'll just read uh, verse two right here, you know, but you can go look at it. The first three verses. Uh, verse two says, and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon, the greatest fallen is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and a hold of every foul spirit and a a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Okay. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth had committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacy. Okay. So the Lord is destroy, going to destroy this place. And you're seeing it now. It's happening right in front of your eyes. Okay. So let's get to the last scripture. 
um, right here in uh, Romans, I jump right in right there where I have it highlighted, right? Verse 12, it says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do modify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of the Most High, they are the sons of the Most High. We walk in the Spirit, right? So that gives us what? Confirmation that we are the sons of the Most High. For ye, verse 15, for ye uh, have not received the spirit of bondage again. Right. You're not going back into the world. You're not being carnal minded again. You're not switching your mind back from being spiritual, man, going back to being a carnal man. Right. Fear, doubt, all kind of other things creeping into your head. You trying to come up with some other formula. No. Okay. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. See. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. Yes, we are the children of the Most High. And we're waiting on it. We're waiting on our Savior to come. We're waiting on His Son. Okay? And if children, then heirs. Heirs of the Most High, joint heirs with what? Hamashiach. With who? Hamashiach. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also glor uh, be also glorified together. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time, right? That's what we're suffering with. Even in Paul's time, they were suffering, right? And we're suffering today. Okay. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature well uh, waited for the manifestation of the sons of the Most High. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Right. Prisoners of hope. But the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of the Most High. For we know that the whole creation groaneth with travaileth in pain together until now, even in his time, and even until now in our time. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Yahweh Shai. You know, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why do he yet hope for it? Right. We haven't seen the destruction of this place yet. Right. But that's what we're hoping for. We know what's going to happen. Last verse right here at 25. And I'll stop right here. But if we hope for that, we see not, then do we with what? Patience wait for it. You know, like they got that saying on almost every meme or whatever it says, wait for it. Okay? So that's what we wait for. We have to what? Have that patience. Right? Last verse again on uh, Romans 8.25. But if we hope for that, we see not, then do we with patience wait. Wait for it. We got to be patient. All right. So with that, I'm going to end the lesson right there, giving all praise to the Most High, Yah, by Shem, Yahweh Shah, by Shem, Rakak, Wadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And I'll see you on the next lesson, Lord willing, real soon. Shalom.